Intake air temperature, absolute throttle position, command secondary air status, oxygen sensor output voltage. Now that's the one I want to have a look at. That seems to be healthy. It fluctuates between about 0.1 of a volt up to about 1 volt. Welcome to the beast that is the Citroen Berlingo. I love these cars. I love the simplicity. I love the space. They're just good fun. Sometimes it's better just to keep it real. This particular car, I have an issue with the engine management. And I'll show you just now exactly what's going to go on. We're going to get the iCar soft out and I'm going to show you something that I haven't seen many videos talk about, which is if you've got your iCar soft, and let's say you've got Volkswagen, Mercedes, Fiat, but you don't have, in this case, the Citroen on your device, you can still use this and you can still clear codes. And importantly, you can actually still work out uh, what the live status is of certain things like sensors. And I'm hoping, plugging this in, I'm gonna be able to see the voltage fluctuating. So let's give it a go, let's plug it in and see. I have got Citroen on this but the menus are really simple and basic. It doesn't actually give you a lot compared to say the Mercedes, but nevertheless, let's, let's have a little look and see. And it's a good little way of showing you that you don't have to have the actual brand of car registered on your device to still use it. You can still get out of trouble by using this, by going into the standard first menu, not the diagnostic menu, but the OBD. And this is how you do it. Let's move on, cause it's time to move on. So the engine management there, as you can see, is on. And the reason being simply is that there's an issue with the exhaust. Potentially it could be the exhaust. It's quite lumpy. It's, it feels like a misfire. Not quite the same uh, behavior, but it's got that sensation that it, it doesn't have the same um, smoothness. Uh, it's done quite a few thousand miles. We're coming up to 82,000 miles. I mean, cats are pretty much, catalytic converters are pretty much okay for if you're lucky, just over 100,000. So it could be on its last legs. However, it could also be the sensor, um, which is in the front of the engine there. And I've also got one of these little um, keys here. It's a socket with a split, and that allows you to take the oxygen sensor off in the manifold. Um, but one thing at a time, I'm gonna first of all plug in the iCar soft, and we're gonna see what I can see. On the Citroen, you have to pull a cover from the front here. And it just pulls off like that. Right, let's plug it in. And we got power. There we go. Okay. So this is the main screen. I've covered this on a few of my other videos. The diagnostic is where you would go into for the particular car that your device, your iCar Soft, has been programmed for. Now, as you can see, I've got a number here. Um, sometimes when you buy these, if you've bought the one that is, say, just for BMW, then you're only going to have BMW. But there's a way of getting all 10 cars if you bought the right iCar Soft, and it allows you to program all these different manufacturers. And all I've done is chosen the ones that I thought would be most useful. So if I go down to the second page, you see that there's Citroen there. So I'm going to go into that. That's just the version of the software, so select that. Um, and we'll see uh, what we can actually uh, look at changing on the car and going into the diagnostics for this Citroen Berlingo. So there's the first one, select the uh, particular car you got, obviously it's a Berlingo, go into that and it's the first one because the second one, the B9, is a slightly newer model. Smart scan, manual scan, smart scan will tell you what the car can actually communicate physically with this device. Manual is if you want to go straight into it, say you've got a problem with the gearbox, then you can select it without having to run through the initial scan. And as you can see here, we've got one of 14 things that uh, is going to be able to talk to on the car using the iCar Soft. So I'll fast forward. Okay, so it's completed its scan. Um, we've got uh, one of six pages here, and these are the items going through 
that you can uh, you can investigate. Now the problem we've got is on the engine and the emission side of it. It doesn't always bring up the area that you want to look into. So, but nevertheless, we'll go in and see what we can see. CP control panel. Let's enter into that. Module information, fault code, clear fault memory, and view data. These are the four options that you get. So I'm going to read the fault code and see if there's anything there. And there's no fault code. So press back. And back again, back to that list. And you're looking really for the most corresponding one that you think is going to be showing where the issue is. For example, there's radio at the bottom. Well, I've got no issues with the radio, so I don't need to go into that. Um, Built-in system interface. Let's see what that's all about. Uh, module information, read fault code. And there's no fault code there either. So looking at this here, there's not a huge amount on the Citroen compared to, say, the Mercedes that you can go into. I know it's not going to be the steering wheel. Um, it's not going to be the multifunction display, which is um, in the cock in the uh, in the centre of the dash. It's not going to be the radio, and that's it. I've got six things only um, that this Citroen software for the iCar Soft is saying that I can do. But fear not. What we're going to do now is we're going to exit this, pressing F2, and we're going to go right back to the main screen. And here we go. So this one here is now going to give me an option for doing OBD2 EOBD. Now of this, going into this here, you can do that on any car. You don't just have to have the car manufacturer programmed on your device. And you can still check an awful lot just by going into this, if you like, generic menu. It's still talking to the car. It's going to go through and see what it can see. all right so this here is giving me a status overview um, it hasn't found any codes even though I got a warning on the dash um, but there is ways that you can now monitor and look into various different items and I'm going to go into that and see so you press enter we're going to read the codes just to see if there's anything historic there and there's no faults so erase codes don't need to do that because there's no code found live data freeze frame vehicle information etc etc so okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go into this live data here and let's see if there's anything there that will give me a clue on the oxygen sensors um, we're going to go into all supported that way it just automatically tells me which ones are going to work with this icar soft so we've got fuel systems, we've got calculated load values, engine coolant temperature, uh, short term trim, that would be on your throttle valve. So let's move down, you've got one of 19. Let's see what else it can do. Intake manifold, absolute pressure. That see if there's any leaks, that'll be handy. Engine speed, revs, well, if you watch when I start the car, let's see what happens. There we go, the revs now go up and we've got live data happening. So this is all off the OBD menu. It is nothing to do with Citroen. This is just the standard that this comes with that you can actually uh, look and observe in any car without having to have the manufacturer stored on your device. Pretty handy, huh? So 921 revs, give a little rev. There you go, you can see the revs are going up nicely. Obviously speed is nothing because we are not moving. Uh, ignition timing advance for cylinder one, minus 11, minus 12. Let's keep going down and see. Intake air temperature, absolute throttle position, command secondary air status, oxygen sensor output voltage. Now that's the one I want to have a look at. And it's sitting at 0.2 and goes to 0.8 and 0.1. And reading online, that seems to be healthy. It fluctuates between about 0.1 of a volt up to about 1 volt and you can see that it's doing its thing there. So the fact that the sensor is actually working kind of tells me that it may just be that it's dirty. So the next step I'm going to do is try and clear the codes, if there is any, and then I'm going to take the sensor out and see if I can give it a clean.
end of the sensor here. It's not the outside that you need to worry about, it's actually inside. And there's a little hole there at the end where I can hope to squirt some cleaning fluid into it. Um, I'm going to give this a good clean. Henkel Loctite, it's a solvent cleaner, great for sort of degreasing and it flashes off, meaning it evaporates really quick. This little hole at the end here really blast out any soot that's built up. All right, let that dry. Then it takes a few seconds. Get it back on the car, and we'll see how that goes. It's a good idea to twist the cable slightly in the opposite direction, so that when it tightens, it's not going to be under any tension. So the sensor's back in. Let's start up the engine and see how it goes. Right, moment of truth. Hey, you know what? That is really much smoother. That is much smoother. No lights on the dash. No light. So all in all, pretty successful. I used the iCar Soft despite the fact that it didn't have much in the way of uh, functions for Citroen, but I went into the standard menu for the OBD. As you could see, we looked at the voltage level. The voltage reading was fluctuating as it should do between about 0.1 volt and about one volt for the sensor, which tells me that the sensor was functioning. And after a clean, I would say the fact that the engine is now smooth, it can't be the catalytic converter because we would still feel that straight away. Physically, there'll be that restriction and it's running smooth now. So with a bit of luck, cleaning that sensor for the sake of a two pound can of spray and of course, an iCar Soft, which I think is more than pay for itself, I've potentially saved the car. And the reason I say that is a catalytic converter for a Citroen Verlingo, which is 2004, is going to cost you more than the price of the car. It's going to cost you about 600 quid. So yeah, pretty successful. Just goes to show a little bit of thought and a little bit of know-how, and you can actually save yourself a whole load of money. And this is your sort of thing. It'd be great if you could subscribe, and thanks very much if you want to. But just here, I've done a really good couple of videos on uh, some other iCar soft that you may be interested in. So appreciate the thumbs up and thanks for watching. Till next time, this has been Groove On. Bye for now.